What's up everybody and welcome back to our practice where we want to do good and stuff. Today, I'm going to be talking about outer space and a few things that need clarification. Specifically, the word universe, the word planet, and the word star. I'm going to be talking about a few technical things here that I can explain to a limit but really can't fully explain myself. So I'll be leaving links in the description for people who want to understand more about the things I'm talking about here. So the word universe is inadequate because there was the Big Bang and then there was something before the Big Bang that made the Big Bang, which maybe put out like other universes and there's alternate timeline universes and there's like extra spatial dimensions and all this stuff. To me, it seems the word universe is inadequate. So we're going to talk about that. And secondly, the word planet is inadequate as well because, you know, there's the whole argument over whether Pluto is a planet or not. Jupiter is a planet. Earth is a planet. None of these things have anything in common with each other, so the word planet needs to be thought about a little bit more. Uh, spoiler alert, uh, Pluto's not a planet, so get over it. And thirdly, uh, stars. There's really two major families of stars, and they're nothing like each other whatsoever. And uh, we're going to talk about that as well. So, here we go. Alright, the universe. What is it? Let's take a look at a common definition. Wikipedia says, The universe is all of space and time and their contents, including planets, stars, galaxies, and all other forms of matter and energy. Okay, that sounds simple enough. That describes our 3D universe plus time, x-axis, y-axis, z-axis, and the rate of change of all the stuff located in that volume. But what about the Big Bang? Don't they say that's what created the universe? How did that happen? There's a bunch of theories about the Big Bang, but one thing is for sure, the Big Bang happened. So that means there was stuff before the Big Bang. Something happened with this stuff, and that caused the Big Bang. This is where the common definition of the universe becomes weak. That means the universe existed before the Big Bang. Maybe not our temporal three-dimensional universe, but a universe nonetheless. Some theories say the Big Bang made a bunch of universes, and they're all flying out away from each other. Some theories say that there are multiple Big Bangs. Some theories demonstrate how there are more spatial dimensions beyond the X, Y, and Z axes and our 3D universe resides in the medium of these higher dimensions, like how the two-dimensional surface of a ball exists in a 3D realm. Some theories say there's an entire universe in every black hole. Looking at the nature of the Big Bang, it seems we are in a black hole. If you put enough mass and energy into a small enough space, called the Schwarzschild radius, an event horizon forms. All matter and energy in the universe was packed very tightly together for some time after the Big Bang. All the conditions for an event horizon to form must have been met. And then, there's all the probability stuff. Schrodinger's cat is alive and dead until you observe it. Then, it is one or the other. In one timeline, the cat is alive, and the other timeline, the cat is dead. Now, there are two entire universes. Are you going to go to the gym or order Chinese food? Just like Schrodinger's cat, you do both. In the double slit experiment, every time a photon is observed to go one way instead of the other, there's a whole universe where the photon did go the other way. How many photons are there in our universe? How many possible outcomes are there? The conclusion here is that there is an infinite number of universes, which totally defies the definition of the word universe. How can this problem be solved? I have no idea, but I think a good first step would be to name our chunk of spacetime. What do you think our universe should be called? Alpha Prime? The One? Larry? Let me know in the comments. All right, I'm going to take a side on a topic some people consider controversial. Pluto is not a planet. It's a KBO, a Cooper Belt object. As scientific knowledge grows, understanding changes and corrections are made. Before I get into a triad, let's take a look at some of the beautiful images of Pluto taken by the New Horizons probe. Okay, the argument of Pluto being a planet is based on feelings of familiarity and nostalgia. And, if you've seen any other L practice videos, then you should know that emotionally based arguments have no credibility. Pluto is not the same thing as Jupiter. Case closed. Beyond that, Earth is nothing like Jupiter either. They're not the same thing. The word planet needs a harder definition. Earth is rocky, metallic, and nice to live on.
Welcome to Earth. Jupiter is like 300 times the mass of the Earth, and it's made mostly of hydrogen and helium. It's more like a star than a planet. That said, let's take a look at some of the beautiful images of Jupiter from the Juno probe. Jupiter is a baby brown dwarf, not a planet. Saturn is similar to Jupiter, just a lot smaller. Uranus and Neptune are different. They're made mostly of water, ammonia, and methane. The only similarity between all these things is that they're round and that they orbit a star. I doubt NASA is going to watch this video, but maybe to fix this etymological issue, they should call bodies like Jupiter and Saturn low-mass brown dwarfs or in honor of the larger such body in our home system, Jovians. And maybe they should call ice giants like Neptune and Uranus, ice giants. Or in honor of the larger such body in our home system, anuses. Nice. This is a little bit of a stretch, but I think the word star is a little too general. The way I see it, there are two major types of stars that are so different, they should not be considered the same thing. There are soft stars, and there are hard stars. Our sun would be a soft star. It's big, and it's actively fusing its contents, mostly hydrogen, into heavier elements. There's a nice balance between the pulling force of gravity and the pushing force of the explodey fusion process. Stars bigger than our sun fuse heavier elements like neon, magnesium, and silicon. But here's the thing. When a star starts to fuse silicon into iron, the star explodes in a supernova in just a few minutes. This happens because the balance between the pulling force of gravity and the explodey force of fusion ends. When a star produces iron, it loses a lot of that explodey force of fusion because iron is a stable element and does not fuse in stars. Gravity takes over, and the star collapses in on itself, and this collapse compresses the innards of the star so hard the atoms themselves get ripped apart into subatomic particles. And when the atoms are ripped apart, there is a massive release of energy, which is the supernova itself. Sometimes, the star is blown completely apart with nothing left. Sometimes, this compression is so hard, the compressed mass crosses the threshold of the Schwarzschild radius, so an event horizon forms, and thus, a stellar mass black hole is born. And sometimes, a compressed ball of atom guts, mostly electrons, neutrons, and protons, remains. This is a neutron star, a hard star which is only a few miles across. This type of object is nothing like a sun-like star. Some neutron stars spin insanely fast and are called pulsars, and some have magnetic fields that are trillions of times more powerful than the magnetic field of our sun, and they're called magnetars. They're my favorite. These bodies are truly heinous, and it's hard to casually explain how they are not like regular stars, and thus the need for another designation. To solve this problem, maybe my idea of hard stars and soft stars could be used. Or because people like things to be special, only the stars that can be seen with the naked eye at night can be called stars. And everything that needs a telescope to be seen should be called something more technical or scientific or whatever. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. All right, that's that. Thank you very much for watching. But before I go, I would like to say thank you to the third Gemini for taking this photo. And it's a little teaser for something that I got coming up next. Uh, a little gaming, El Practice Gaming. We're going to try that out. And uh, this is El Practice. Uh, check us out on Twitter and the El Practice Guarantee. As always, if you want to live forever, like and subscribe.